just disappointing. However you want to look at this game, it does go down as a huge disappointment for Team Canada as this men's program, they had the second best odds coming into the Paris Olympics when it came to winning the gold medal. Canada falls to France here in the quarterfinals, just as they did 24 years ago in Sydney, 82-73 the final. And Canada, they will miss the podium completely. They came into this tournament with sky-high expectations, and the fact of the matter is they will not have a deep tournament run. They get stunned here. As Canada, they were the favorites. They were expected to win this game against a France team that didn't look that good in the group stage. Canada looked far more impressive in the group stage, obviously getting by the group of death, beating the teams that they did. Perfect 3-0 record to get to this spot. And Canada, they were unable to overcome just a terrible first quarter, made things a little bit interesting late there in the game. but. Canada's lack of size ended up being their Achilles heel. And this France team, they win this game despite Wemby only scoring seven points and Rudy Gobert essentially not playing in this one. If you had said that going into this game, you would have thought Canada was going to win this game convincingly. Remember, Canada did beat France convincingly in that exhibition game before this tournament started, but it was not the case in this one. It was the non-NBA guys for France who absolutely stepped up. Lasorde had 13 from off the bench. Cordier, I mean, he went off in that first quarter, really setting the tone for France as their spark plug. Yabaselli had 22. I mean, those guys were absolutely electric for France. As Canada, outside of Shea Gilgis Alexander, who really was the only guy in this one who came to play from start to finish, he did all he could to single-handedly keep Canada in this game. And he got some help from RJ, but outside of that, a lot of guys no-showed. I mean, Dylan Brooks was disappointing, 1-9 and nine from the field, two points. And then you look at Jamal Murray, just absolutely horrible tournament. And I said, I said in the last post-game video that I did, if Canada wanted to make a deep run and get a medal, Jamal Murray was going to have to show up eventually. Jamal Murray was going to have to step up. Jamal Murray had his worst game of this tournament. And that's saying something because collectively, Murray did not look good at all in this tournament. Seven points, but three of 13 from the field. How many easy buckets did he miss? One of four from three. Just looked completely out of sync. He looked like a guy who was scared of the moment. And that's crazy to think because we've seen Jamal Murray come up big time and time again on the NBA stage for his Denver Nuggets, but with Canada, he was a shell of himself. So Murray did not show up at all. Canada, no bench production. It was Shea's 27, RJ 16, Lou Dort. His defense was solid in this one. He had eight points, three of six shooting, but this was not the Team Canada team that we're accustomed to seeing, especially in that first half. I mean, in that first quarter, Canada, they were ice cold from the field. They weren't getting the 50-50 balls. So many turnovers, just costly turnovers. Canada, they ended this game with 14 turnovers, but a lot of those coming in the first half. Sloppy play just looked like a team that was not ready at all. Th that was the worst we had seen Canada look by far. Yeah, couldn't hit a shot, couldn't hit a three. They finished this game just 5 of 21 from three. They shot at just 37% from the field. And France, they were just too big. I mean, Canada, we saw them have success with those small ball lineups. But in a game like this, with France's size, it did not do Canada any favors. Canada, they were definitely missing a true big man presence in this game. You know, a Zach Eady, if you will. Because they were just getting exposed in the paint. And even late in this game, a couple of offensive boards for France. And then obviously, the biggest thing here, a lot of people, you know, saying... Was this influenced? You know, this game was in France. That home crowd. We saw how electric they were. Hostile environment. Obviously, you know, playing a big factor in this one. But you look at the free throw attempts, guys. France had 42 free throw attempts. That is nuts. 33 of 42 at the line. Canada only had 25 attempts, going 18 of 25 from the line. And really... You boil it down, free throws, a huge component of this game. As France, they got to the line a ton. They made their free throws, 78.6% of them. 
And you look at this win, it is just massive for France. The way they were able to beat the second most talented team in this tournament with all the NBA talent without their best player, Victor Wabanyama, having a huge game. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. And Gobert didn't play, didn't start. Who knows what's going to happen with him for the rest of the tournament? But again, you would have liked your chances if you were Team Canada. If I told you Wemby was going to struggle from the field, did not hit a three, two of 10 from the field. Yeah, he had his 12 rebounds, five assists, three steals, but only seven points. I would have definitely thought Canada was going to win this game by at least double digits. But instead, it was the reverse. France winning this game, and really, they had the momentum throughout. Got off to that great start in the first quarter. Canada played a little bit better in the second, but still found themselves in a big hole, down by 16, going into the second half. But then they mounted a comeback, Shea doing all he could, getting you know the Canadians within striking distance. But Canada, they just needed some more help. They needed other guys to make plays. Jamal Murray struggles, really hurting this team late in the game. And France continuously got to the line, and they got big buckets when they needed to. You know, Evan Fournier came up big on a few occasions with his three ball, three of six from deep in this one. So it, it, it's tough. It, it, it's a tough way for Canada to bow out of this tournament. This was a team that was expected to at least get in the podium. If they had won this game, they would have had a chance for at least the bronze, but they lose in this spot. It's disappointing. It really, really is that this was a team that, you know, they were thinking about, talking about, eyeing down the United States, unable to get by France, unable to advance to the semifinals. And there's going to be a lot of question marks coming out of this. So, I mean, there's a lot that obviously went France's way when you look at the free throws. But bottom line is Canada, they should have never made this a game. This should have not been close. This should have not been in France's favor. The way Canada opened up this game, it really hurt them. And they just looked out of sync. They made things difficult for themselves. Their sequences were not good. I mean, France was just all over them, really, in that first half. And then Canada, whenever you go down by 16, you got to basically play a perfect half to come back and win this game. And for as much talent as this team had, they left themselves with literally no room for error. And they had to go out there in the second half and overcome that huge deficit, obviously falling short. So, look, I know the free throws went their way, but you still got to give France a ton of credit because those guys that I mentioned, I mean, they had huge games. Cordier, I mean, in that first quarter alone, he was just absolutely electric, getting the crowd into it early. He was the X factor for me in this one. And then obviously... You know, you look at, yeah, Baselli, he was big. And then Victor Wabanyama, he did what he could on the glass. And really, France bailing him out. France winning this game despite Victor Wabanyama's struggles from the floor. So Team Canada, I expected them to look a lot better. We obviously expected them to have a better result at this tournament. And now it's going to be all about 2028. But I think size is going to be on the forefront for this Canadian team because they got exposed in this one with their lack of size. Obviously, you're going to look at a guy like Zach Eady, hopefully for the next, you know, tournament run. But they really just got dominated in terms of their lack of size going up against this tall, long France team, making things difficult. And uh, Canada, they did not shoot the ball well, as we were accustomed to them seeing. And somebody other than Shea needed to step up in a big way. As I said, RJ did chip in with 16, but... You look at outside of those guys, basically a non-factor from everybody else. You know, you thought Brooks was going to be better and Jamal Murray, not going to just pin it on one guy, but that was one guy who I definitely thought was due for a big game. And really, he did not show up at all for Canada in this tournament. And you just knew that Jamal Murray was going to have to wake up at some point and it never happened. And as a result, Canada exits early. So big disappointment for Team Canada, guys. No podium for them. They lose in the quarterfinals again to France, shades of 24 years ago. This one's going to hurt and sting for a while as, you know, following that impressive run last year at the FIBA World Cup, Canada, they were expected to at least be a part of the Final Four. And the fact that they go out here in this spot, I know they drew the toughest opponent in the knockout stage, but still, they were expected to win this game. They were favored, and France's Twin Towers were not as big of a 
factor as you expected them to be. So all things considered, Canada should have won. They didn't win. And now it's going to be a lot of reflecting as this team exits early and they hope to bounce back in four years' time. But let me know your thoughts on this game, guys. What do you think the turning point was? Where did you expect Canada to be better? And how are you feeling after this disappointing exit for Team Canada? They get stunned here by France, the home nation, as France will now move on to take on Germany in the semifinals as we await the winner of Brazil, USA. The winner of that will take on Serbia in the other semifinal matchup as this tournament is winding down. Let me know your thoughts. Hit a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel for more. That is it for me. It's Lucas signing off. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you all again in the next one.